I'm Alicia Trost. I'm BART's Chief Spokesperson and Department Manager of Communications. I've been here two years and it's my job to talk to the media and talk to the public about what's going on at BART. Well, BART is a almost 42-year-old system. We run trains throughout the Bay Area. We cover three different counties and we serve about 400,000 passengers a day. Uh, we have 669 trains, 44 stations, and 104 miles of track. It's really the backbone of transportation for the Bay Area. Down the street! Yeah! Down the whole damn world! This is Union Territory! Oh, you people! Yeah! We're still at the table and we're negotiating right now, but I can tell you this is two things. Number one, our international did give us the strike sanction we were looking for. It has to do with uh, some provisions in our contract in the Constitution that calls for interest arbitration. We've told them that we've been through interest arbitration and our workers want to stay at the table and bargain a contract or have the opportunity to, to do what's next, which is, you know, withhold our labor. So the strike was a result of labor negotiations. When the legislature created BART, it set up a process of collective bargaining. This is California, and it uh, respects the collective bargaining process, which means every four year BART every four years, BART needs to renegotiate our contract. And the contract is what sets um, our employees' wages, benefits, as well as the work rules that we have in place to make sure that our employees are safe. And so our labor contract was coming to um, expiration, and we were in a deadlock in the middle of negotiations. We couldn't reach an agreement, and the employees um, voted to go on strike. And we had two strikes. Um, both lasted about four days. One was four and a half days, and it absolutely crippled the Bay Area. It wasn't the um, finest hour for BART uh, at all, and we've learned a lot from it. Um, we now have a contract in place, but in three years, we're going to be right back at it, having to go through labor negotiations and possibly facing another strike. When the employee's contract expires, they have a right to strike, and we are not allowed to lock them out, so it goes both ways. Um, and that is something that we respect very much, the collective bargaining process. And uh, but that, that's basically what why the strike occurred, is we were in a deadlock. Uh, the employees wanted a certain amount of money for a raise. BART was saying that it could not afford that, given the amount of investments we needed to make in our 40-year-old system. And the employees went out on strike. City Council Member Steve Blazer says 2,000 people have signed his online petition supporting a ban on BART worker strikes. Consequences on us because they closed down the system. We can't get to work, we can't get to school, we can't get to our appointments. So uh, that consequence should be taken off the table. Blazer admits he's a lone voice in calling for a strike ban, but he says there are bans in New York, Boston, and Washington, D.C., and so he's handing out flyers to BART writers this morning, asking them to sign the petition. Now, BART writers I spoke with appear to be split on the idea. There should be a ban on having them going on strike. How okay. come? They should be, because they are providing public service. I would probably say no. Um, I think it's important to have those freedoms. A BART strike could occur as early as October the 11th. Well, um, Assembly candidate Steve Glazer clearly picked up on the public's outrage about BART strikes and use, is using that as his platform to try to get a seat in the Assembly. What he would need to do to then um, follow through on his commitment if he won is to pass a bill through both the Assembly and the Senate to ban um, strikes, and then the governor would have to sign it. And so I'm not, it's not me to say how that story is going to play out. Um, he'll have to uh, first win his seat and then 
try to follow through on his promise and then it'll become a huge political battle in Sacramento absolutely it's very difficult to get a legislation that would ban strikes because California honors collective bargaining process and the process of um, renegotiating contracts and allowing unions to be able to strike one of the arguments that's frequently made is that BART is a vital service, very similar to police and fire. They are not allowed to go on strike. A police officer is never allowed to go on strike because it would be um, detrimental to society. It would be an unsafe situation. And so the argument has been made that BART should be in the similar category. But it will be a huge fight in Sacramento to make that happen. We'll just have to see how that plays out um, and if Steve Glazer wins his seat in the assembly. Because, well, the whole thing just seems like a, a powder keg to me. Well, either side, though. It's definitely taken on a life of its own and become a big political battle, using it as platform. Um, the campaign has obviously turned very nasty when you're listening to the ads. I see them everywhere. I see them when I'm on social media. I see them when I'm reading newspapers. A lot of money has clearly been spent. Um, that's that's not rare in the political world. I came from Sacramento. I was a press secretary and a communications director for the Senate president. So I've seen this type of stuff before.